So now we come to our analysis of variance, uh, which is uh, often referred to as just the ANOVA. And when we look at the results of an ANOVA, it's presented as an F statistic. What the F statistic is doing is it's going to go ahead and compare the difference between the groups. If we have a large difference, hopefully that's because of uh, an experimental variance, right? We had uh, a big impact from drinking the vitamin water. Uh, it will also take into account the measure uh, based on within group variance. So it's going to look at how, uh, how much variability is there within each of our uh, two uh, groups. And remember, we talked about earlier how there's actually a relationship between uh, if, if the null hypothesis is correct and we're just uh, and there's no impact of the treatment uh, and everything is pretty much just like drinking normal water, we should see if we pull from a population we should see some sampling error and we should also see some variability within the groups. So the ANOVA uh, looks at the between groups and the uh, within groups uh, at both of those variabilities. Now the F statistic, uh, we want it to be large uh, so that we can reject the null hypothesis. A large F statistic would be consistent with our treatment having a large impact. So um, if we increase the distance between our groups, if vitamin water, if we give a, an amount that was really helpful in people's IQs really increased, uh, we get a large F statistic. One thing I want to point out before I go too fast is that the F statistic indicates uh, the amount of overlap between the distributions. So the less overlap between the two different distributions, the more certain we can be that our treatment had an impact. Right? And so again, that F uh, can be increased by large group differences. That is, the vitamin water has a huge impact on IQ. Let's take a look at it. So we have our treatment and our control group. And notice that there's a lot of overlap. Uh, between the two groups, and that sample means are fairly uh, close together, we're going to get a small F statistic uh, around 1, which essentially means, uh, hey, this is consistent with the null hypothesis, nothing is happening here. If um, there's a, a less overlap between our treatment and control group, that becomes more consistent with the research hypothesis, our F statistic would be larger. And if we had only a small amount of overlap between our two different distributions, because, for example, the vitamin water uh, is helpful, or because there was a confound uh, and, and that separated the two um, distributions, if there's some systematic impact because of the experimental uh, manipulation or because of a confound, there's going to be much less overlap between our two distributions. And then the F statistic will be large saying, hey, this difference is much larger than you would expect us to do to sampling error. Okay, so the more overlap, the smaller the F statistic, the larger the overlap, the bigger the F statistic. Okay, that analysis of variance, as mentioned, it compares the between group variance uh, with the within group variance. So take a look uh, at this particular scenario. Notice that we have a control group and a treatment group. There's not much difference between the two groups, but that difference is really clear because the uh, within group variance is fairly small. Very little overlap. Okay. <coughs> so uh, again, lots of overlap between our treatment and control group. We have a small F statistic. If we were to decrease our within group variance, Look at that. Now there's very little overlap between the two, and the F statistic uh, becomes big. So essentially, F statistic, the bigger it is, the smaller the overlap uh, between the two groups, two or more groups, and the more certain we can be that there's a real difference, that it's not just due to sampling error. OK? So F statistic indicates the amount of overlap between the distributions. Uh, for example, between a treatment and a control distribution. If there's a little bit of overlap and that's all, then we'll have a large F statistic. We can increase the uh, ANOVA results by having a larger between group difference or smaller within group differences. How could you get smaller within group differences? Uh, you could work with uh, a population that's uh, more similar where there's not a lot of differences between uh, members of the group. You can also use dependent measures uh, that are reliable uh, so that they're uh, more dependable. Okay, so when we do the ANOVA and we calculate our F statistic, 
That S statistic is going to be larger than 1, hopefully, if our research hypothesis is true. Why should it be larger than 1? Well, you have sampling error in the top. That's uh, going to cause some small difference between the groups. You're going to have within group variance in the bottom. And uh, if the null hypothesis is true, these two things uh, will essentially uh, cancel out and we'll get an F statistic of 1. But if we throw in some experimental variance, that is our vitamin water is actually helpful, improves people IQ, that's going to increase the distance between our two distributions and our F statistic is going to be larger than 1. A good indicator that we should reject the null. Keep in mind, though, that just because uh, an ANOVA is statistically significant does not mean that it was necessarily your manipulation. It could be due to a confound, right? A confound could also result in a systematic effect. If the null hypothesis is true, we won't have any experimental variance. Hopefully, we wouldn't have any extraneous variance due to confounds. And we would just have sampling error uh, in the uh, top and uh, within group variance in the bottom. And those two should essentially kind of cancel each other out, giving an F statistic of 1. Of course, even at the null hypothesis true, there are occasions where F will be really large uh, just due to sampling error. That would be a type 1 error that we talked about earlier. So there's essentially three reasons why F statistic could be large. It could be large because the research hypothesis is true. It could be large because there's a confound. It could be large uh, because of type 1 error. Uh, in terms of uh, the confound, we just do our best to make sure that there aren't any possible confounds that could affect the results. For type 1 error, uh, we set it at 0.05, and that's what we have to live with. And hopefully uh, our experiment, the independent variable, really is having impact, uh, and that will allow us to successfully reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so in summary, a large F statistic indicates a small overlap between their conditions, for example, an experimental and control group. If the probability that the difference uh, due to sampling error is 0.05 or less, that's our alpha level, then we'll reject the null hypothesis. Okay, and we know our type 1 error is also going to be 0.05, the probability that we'll incorrectly reject the null hypothesis. Okay, now I want to let you know when would we use the ANOVA and why do we use the ANOVA. You're probably familiar already with the independent samples t-test that allows you to do a pairwise comparison. And if you have three groups, you might wonder why not just do the independent samples t-test three times. For example, between groups A and B, B and C, and C and A. Um, the problem is that every time you do a statistical analysis with your alpha set at 0.05, uh, each time you do that analysis, that increases the overall alpha. So the analysis between uh, groups A and B, or alpha, doing an independent samples t-test would be 0.05. Then another 0.05 for your comparison between B and C, and yet another 0.05 between your, uh, for the comparison between groups C and A. Uh, you add that up, and uh, it's not exactly 0.15, uh, but it will be 0.143, much bigger than our 0.05. The beauty of the ANOVA is it lets us uh, make comparisons between uh, two or more groups. And if there's three or more groups, it doesn't matter. If there's four or more groups, it doesn't matter. It'll keep the overall alpha to 0.05. And uh, that's important. We don't want to increase our type 1 error. So with three or more groups, the one-way ANOVA will let you know, importantly, if at least one group differs from the rest. That's the plus. The drawback is it doesn't tell you which group differs from the other. In order to determine that, you'll need to follow up with some planned comparisons. All right. Hope you found this helpful. I would like to give acknowledgement uh, for the images that I used. Uh, you're welcome to go visit the sites and see them. Thank you so much.